Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. And today I'm surrounded by hats. Why? Because today we're going to put the new Cricut hat press to the test, try it on a wide variety of hats so we can see what works and what doesn't, and give you my full breakdown and review of the Cricut hat press and whether I think it's worth it or not. Now, this video is sponsored by Cricut, however all projects and opinions are my own. So what kind of hats are we going to do? So I've got baseball caps and hats, I have kids hats, I have visors, bucket hats, like sun hats, beach hats, tons of different hat types. And I'm going to add either HTV, infusible ink, or sublimation to each of these hats. So we're gonna test all three on a variety of hats and see which work with the hat press, maybe which don't, and kind of some tips and tricks for getting each type of hat to work if it is possible. Now I will link to all the hats in the description below this video, plus the Cricut hat press. So if you are on computer, click show more. If you're on mobile, either click the arrow to expand the description or swipe up on the video depending on how you're watching. If you wanna learn more about the hat press itself, if you've never seen the Cricut hat press before, I have a full video on it with an unboxing, including what comes in the box, as well as general instructions for setup and for using the Cricut Hat Press. So the Cricut Hat Press can work manually or it can work with the Cricut Heat app. And I will probably do these sort of both ways to test both ways for myself. But if you wanna see both ways work, I would definitely head to that video. So for now, let's take a look at kind of the designs I'm gonna use because I've already cut them out of my Cricut machine. And let's start pressing and giving you some tips and tricks for using the Cricut Hat Press on a huge wide variety of hats. So I have a ton of designs that I've already either cut and weeded or printed. So I have HTV designs and I went ahead and cut my HTV and weeded it. I'm gonna do some layered, some not layered, some long, some short, variety of designs. And then I have some infusible ink that I cut and weeded as well as some infusible ink pens and markers that I've written on copy paper. And then I have some sublimation prints. So I did print these out of Cricut Design Space. All of the designs you see are Cricut Designs and Cricut Design Space. I will link to a file in the description below where all these designs are located. You can open that up, delete the ones off that you don't want, and start cutting or printing the ones that you would like to use. So now that we have all of our designs, all that's left to do is to press. So I went ahead and pressed one of these in my previous video with infusible ink and it worked great, but I have two more to test with both HTV as well as sublimation. I have my hat press heating up and I am using the Cricut Heat app for this first one. And so let's go over really quickly. I'm only gonna do putting the hat on the form once. So you want to remove any packaging material that may be in your hat and fold the sweatband out. Then you'll just slip the hat over the form. And I like to undo the back of the hat if possible. If it's not possible, just loosen it up. Then I have this just flipped over and you can use this handle to sort of adjust the form. And then we're gonna make sure that sweatband is out all the way around. And I'm gonna pull the hat tight and buckle the back. Now that the hat is in the form, it will stand up. So we can stand it upright. And we just wanna make sure this is tight across here, no wrinkles, no air bubbles, everything should be tight where you're going to press. Then for infusible ink and sublimation especially, we are gonna lint roll, but even for HTV, it's nice to lint roll so you don't get anything caught underneath your iron on. The first step in the Cricut Heat app is to preheat your hat. Put the hat press on, press the go button, move back and forth for five seconds. When it's done, it will beep. And then I have this cute plant mom iron-on design cut out of Cricut iron-on and I'm just gonna put that on the hat. So for designs, we do wanna stay half an inch away from the bill when we place the design. And the design itself, we wanna be 2.25 inches by 4.25 inches maximum is the recommendation. I am gonna push that a little bit with some longer designs and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that on those. Cricut Strong Heat Resistant Tape. It must be the heat resistant tape and you want the strong to handle the curve of the hat. This is a new product and it's purple and you'll find a roll with your hat press, a small roll, and then you can purchase larger rolls that look like this. Even though this is an iron-on design and this sheet is sticky, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down. 
So it does not stick really well to curved surfaces. So we're gonna go ahead and stick it down. And you also wanna trim the carrier sheet both close to your design and you might wanna put some slits in it to make it curve a little bit better. Something else you'll need for all of your projects is Cricut Butcher Paper. For infusible ink and sublimation, it's used to keep any ink off of your heat press. But in this case with the hat press, it also gives a smooth surface because we will be moving the hat press back and forth. When I use a piece of this butcher paper on this HTV project, I can reuse it on the next HTV project without any issues. So there's my design all taped up and I'm just gonna lay a piece of butcher paper on there and just a couple of pieces of tape on the sides. Now I can reuse all this, the tape, the butcher paper. It just gives me something smooth so I won't hang on the edges or on the tape that's on my design. So now I'm ready to press. So it tells me 60 seconds with light pressure. So I put the hat press down, press the go button, apply light pressure and just move it back and forth. And my app will count down for me. So there's no reason for me to count and the hat press will beep when it's done. So you can hold the hat form from the side as you press. The movement back and forth helps to distribute the heat evenly. So they do recommend that on all projects. The movement back and forth should be something like you would move your mouse, so it doesn't, it's not super fast, not super slow either, so somewhere kind of in the middle. When it's done pressing, it will beep, and then we can lift it off, and it does tell you in the app to peel cool. So this hat form will be hot. It will cool a little faster if you take it off the form, but you can absolutely leave it on the form as the HDV cools. So I went ahead and removed my butcher paper. Remember, I'm gonna set this to the side and I'm gonna reuse this whole thing with the tape on the sides. And then I just peel back the tape from the hat itself. And again, if these are still sticky, I'll probably reuse those. And then you just peel back the carrier sheet from your HTV. And everything stuck great. And my hat looks awesome. So there is HTV on the Cricut Trucker hat. Let's move on to sublimation. I went ahead and prepped the hat for sublimation in the same way. So I have it on the form, I preheated it, and I lint rolled it. For sublimation, I'm gonna use the third setting on the hat press. So I am gonna do it manually. The third setting has the right temperature for sublimation and it will time for 90 seconds to press your hat. And the lights went from orange to green. Now it's heated up and ready. So this is sublimation ink on sublimation paper printed on a sublimation printer. And it is mirrored, so that would be important if you had words with your design. The same rules apply for placement as well as size. And I put it ink side down on the hat. And then I'm just gonna use some of that same tape and tape it down really well. With sublimation, it is going to be important to add that protective paper to the top, just so ink does not get on the hat press. So I just put down a piece of protective paper and tape that down as well. And now we can press. Put the hat press on the design, press the go button, and I am gonna still move back and forth during the full time. And again, I'm just using light pressure to press down. The front of the Cricut Trucker hat is polyester, so it's fine for infusible ink as well as sublimation. When it's done, the press will beep. I can set it down. You can remove the sublimation print warm or cool. And you can see the ink transferred and I have a gorgeous sublimation print on my hat. No ghosting or anything, it really looks great. So there's a closer look so you can see the vibrant colors as well as the fact that there's no ghosting even though I had to move the press back and forth. In my last video, I did this hat with HTV, and this hat is just like from Amazon. It's just a plain hat. So I thought I would order some other plain hats. So I ordered a couple of hats that are polyester. So these are just plain polyester hats, and I'm gonna do infusible ink on one and sublimation on the other. And I went ahead and had my Cricut machine draw an infusible ink design. Again, this is mirrored. I'm just gonna put that into place, and you will notice these do have a seam down the center. Once that's in place where I want it, again, we'll tape it down really well. And you can go over top of the infusible ink. It won't hurt anything. Because this is the pens, I'm gonna put four layers of paper over the top. So it is important to protect it really well because the pens do bleed really badly. Because the paper is so many layers, I think I'll add a couple extra strips.
And then once this is on here, we are ready to press. Put the hat press in place and press the go button. Then move it back and forth across your hat for the full time. Then once that's done, it will beep and we can remove our press. I'm gonna remove this paper to let this cool just a little bit before peeling this back. Then we can just peel back this design and see how it looks on this hat. So on the edges, it did not do as well. So I'm actually gonna try to line this up and press it a little bit more on the edges and see what happens. So me trying to reline it up and press again left some ghosting. So you definitely wanna make sure you get those edges good on the first press because lining it up apparently is not going to work very well. So this is a polyester hat from Amazon. I did a sublimation flower on the front. Turned out great, no ghosting, anything like that. But I also put a design on the back on this one. I wanted to show that this is not only for designs on the front of the hat, the bill of the hat, but all around the hat as well. So you can definitely put them on the back of a baseball cap. This is sublimation designs again, but you can use iron on as well. So let's try some visors. So first I have a cotton visor and I'm gonna use HDV on it. And then I have a polyester visor and we're gonna use a layered infusible ink design on it. So it's on the hat form in the same exact manner. Then we'll just add the HTV to the visor. And again, I'm gonna tape it down so it sticks. And then I'm just gonna use a piece of paper to get me a smooth surface to run my hat press across. Now that it's heated up, I'm just gonna put it in place, press the go button, and move it back and forth for the full time. Then we can just peel back the carrier sheet from the iron-on. And there you have a visor. Cricut does not recommend you do infusible ink or sublimation on the bill of hats because you can damage what's inside the bill itself. So we're gonna do HTV, and I just wanna do a pair of flip-flops over here on the side. So I'm gonna locate those, tape them down, and I am just gonna tape from all sides here and run it over without the paper. See how that works. And see if I need the paper for the HTV. So to do the bill, I'm just gonna kind of find a place on the form that is stable for the area of the bill that I'm pressing on. So this is pretty stable and I just have it kind of on top of the form. I'm gonna kind of move it back and forth for that full time. And once it's done, I'm gonna remove the hat press and then we're just gonna let this cool. I'm just gonna kind of make sure I think I got all the areas here. So I did wanna note here, while this is hot, a lot of times with odd surfaces like this, I like to rub this with my scraper. So the bill of this has all this stitching and your HTV is gonna have to adhere to like a rough surface. So as it cools, pressing down often helps it adhere well. Then once it's cool, we can start lifting up that carrier sheet, making sure our HTV is stuck to the bill of the hat. And both the bill and the front of this visor look amazing. So you can definitely put HTV on the bill of a hat. So I have a polyester visor here just from Amazon and I'm gonna add infusible ink to it. I have a two layer infusible ink design. So I just put one layer on the carrier sheet with the other one. And now I'm gonna put them both on the hat at the same time. And once you put that in place, you do wanna tape it down. The carrier sheet is sticky, but it is not gonna hold it in place well enough. All right, so now everything's in place. My hat press is heated up. So let's press infusible ink onto a hat. We'll just press moving back and forth for the entire time. Looks so good. With infusible ink, the color of the hat will show through because infusible ink is translucent. So it will alter the colors. So with a closer look, you can probably see where my tape was and a few other things. So these are called press marks and polyester is notorious for this. So you can try to press those out, but most likely they will not press out. So playing with different blanks with infusible ink and sublimation is gonna be critical. So you might find some visors that do not do this, but a lot of them will change colors or press marks will be visible once you're done pressing. Can the Cricut hat press do kids hats? Let's find out. I have a variety of sizes of kids hats. I'm gonna add HTV to all of them because I just happened to find a good listing on Amazon and they're all cotton. 
So the hat form itself is for adult hats. So if I was to try to put this kid hat over this form, the form would be way too large to use as it's intended. However, it is smaller if you turn it up on its side like this. So I have the handle facing this way and I'm gonna put my hat with the back of the hat over the handle and I'm still going to work that sweat band out. So that is very important so you have a smooth surface once you get your hat on here. So we're working the hat kind of over the side of the form where the form is smaller. And then we can lay the form down with the handle against the table and just work the hat some more. And this hat fits perfectly on the form. No air bubbles, everything's tight. So you just need to kind of work it until everything feels pretty good to you. And then we'll go ahead and preheat this for a few seconds. And again, I'm gonna add HTV to all of these just because that was the listing I found. If you can find a polyester hat or a sublimation hat in kid sizes, I'm sure it will work the same way. And we're gonna tape this in place a few times. So this design, I just showed you that you don't necessarily have to put the paper over the iron-on when you press. However, I cut this accidentally on a setting that was a little deep and it's cut through in several places. So this is not smooth at all across here. I'm once again gonna add the paper. Again, I showed that maybe you don't have to do that, but if you're like me, mess up, cut this on the wrong setting. There's no reason to waste it. It'll still work fine. I just need to tape a piece of paper over it so it'll be smooth. And then we're gonna press this on the setting for iron on and see how it turns out. So just make sure everything, again, flat against the form no air bubbles and everything you know is stretched across the form itself and then this is to temperature i'm going to put it over my design press the go button and press this htv to a kid's hat once it's done i'll remove that and allow this to cool before removing the carrier sheet once it's cool we can just start peeling this back and see if our htv and it is stuck to our kids ball cap. So there's another way to use this form to make hats of different sizes. And there's a closer look at just how good this kid's hat looks. I'm gonna make the other two off camera then come back and show you how they look. And here are two more kids hats with HTV on them. So this one is supposed to be like a 12 month. This one was a 2T so they were all like different sizes and I got them all to work by turning that hat form the same way and pulling it over the side instead of over the top. So HTV on kids hats is definitely possible. Next up I'm gonna do a bucket hat and I'm gonna put these Mickey heads all over it. So an all over design on a hat is next. And for the bucket hat, it doesn't really have a sweatband. I'm just gonna kind of pull it. You would pull any sweatband out. This one really doesn't have one. And then you just want it to be as tight as possible on your surface. And then we can stand it up. We can put Mickey heads here. We can put them on the side. We can put them on the top. So I'll just turn my hat form as I go, putting Mickey heads in various places one at a time. I'm just gonna remove the tape, remove the carrier sheet, and continue on with the rest of the Mickeys. Then after you've added Mickey heads or whatever your design is all the way around, we're gonna lift it off and then do it on the bill. Now you do need to be careful after each one you could probably leave the carrier sheet on them. I was removing the carrier sheets as I went, and this is like a watercolor patterned iron-on, so it looks really good, except one of my Mickey heads, I got a little bit carried away and touched it with the hat press while I was pressing this one. So it did mess up the ear just a little bit. So just a warning on that. But then we remove it, and we're just gonna set the bill, and I'm gonna do a few heads of various places on the bill. Now just continue on and finish this hat. Here's my completed bucket hat with Mickey's all around it. Definitely possible to make an all over design with the Cricut hat press. So I've been practicing on some hats like this. So wide brim hats, various types. If you leave the design long, you can press it in sections, but when you lay it on the hat, it gets 
crooked. So it's low down on the sides and high up, if you can see that. So this is laying flat on the hat, but it doesn't go, like I want it to be even all the way around, at least fairly even off the band. So cutting it up into sections is what I found is best. And then we'll just press each section the same way we've been pressing everything else. Every once in a while I might pick up and look at the hat, then set my press back down, especially if I don't know what the hat is made out of. So once you're done with this one, remove the tape, leave the carrier sheet, add your second piece, tape that down, press the second piece, and continue all the way around the hat. Then you can keep everything fairly straight by doing it in sections. And if you leave the carrier sheet on all the way around, then you won't run the risk of damaging your iron-on. So here's my completed hat. So I went ahead and let it cool, took the carrier sheets off. A trick on a hat like this, so you may get some lines from the carrier sheet. A trick is to remove the carrier sheets, then put a Teflon sheet over the top and just go like a couple of seconds. Helps with the lines, any like glue that may seep out from the HTV when doing like these odd shapes. I did have to press this twice to get the carrier sheet to remove, but overall I'm super happy with the results. So I wanted to do a bunch of these like wide rimmed hats. So these with a the texture on the hat, I found it best to put it like, so this was a ribbon that was on the hat and I added the HTV to the ribbon. Now this one I did all in one piece and I just did it in sections. So I pressed over here, then I pressed over here. It worked pretty well. I wasn't sure what material the ribbon itself was made out of and you may be able to see some dark spots where it looked like it started to melt, but overall I'm super happy with the results. So can you put it on the textured portion of the hat? So I was able to add this beach hair design to this textured portion. It is much more difficult. So what I recommend is pressing it down, removing the carrier sheet, going over with the Teflon sheet, and then using something like the scraper to sort of push it into the texture. It's not perfect, but it definitely did work. Now with this one, the design was actually longer and I tried to leave it in one piece and it did not work at all. So it, for the textured portion, I would definitely recommend doing it in small sections. However, you may not wanna to get too textured or too large with your design. So this is another textured hat with a wide brim and I put a larger design on it and you may be able to, able to tell but the HTV was really wrinkly and then I tried this in a couple spots on the hat and this spot was obviously a failure. So getting too textured on the hat you're putting it on can definitely lead to disaster. Now I wanted to do a graduation cap and this one was a fail. It did work so this is an infusible ink design it worked fine. However the cap itself is lined in something that melted. <laughs> it melted all over the place so I will call this one a fail and definitely don't try to put infusible ink, sublimation, anything onto a graduation hat. Then finally I had someone ask about structured hats. So the baseball cap itself stands up and it definitely does structured hats great. And I also wanted to show with this one layering. So this is two layers of HTV on a hat. So I pressed the first layer for about half the time, removed the carrier sheet, added my second layer, pressed for the full time, and removed the carrier sheet again. So you can layer your HTV on hats as well. Okay, that was a lot of hats. <laughs> what did we learn from making all of these hats? So the first thing I learned is that pressing HTV on a smooth surface is easiest. So the ball craps work great, the visors work great, the hat bucket hat worked great, this hat with the wide brim that was flat worked great, the textured surfaces, eh, <laughs> some of them worked okay others did not. So a smooth surface is going to be your friend. Now for sublimation and infusible ink you'll need that polyester surface. The Cricut hats work amazing. So I tried several of the trucker hats. They all work great. I really like the look and feel of them. So if you like those as well I don't think you can go wrong there. However if you want to order other polyester hats off Amazon feel free or wherever, feel free to do that. Feel free to give them a try. Be warned that you might get press marks like I did on the visor, or they might not always work correctly like this hat here did where it kind of like faded out on the edges with the pin. I really think it was to do with more of the blank than anything else. And these hats, I will link to them below, both the pink one and the green one, they are super thin. 
So it's probably not a hat I would actually wear after I got them. But they're polyester, so the sublimation would work on them. But after I got them, I really did not like them. Then I was thrilled that I could get the form to work on kids' hats as well. So that's something I liked. And I felt like the form worked great no matter which hat I was using. So kids' hats, adults' hats, visors, structured hats versus non-structured, the ones with the wide brim, the sun hats, the bucket hats. Like the form worked great for all of those. So I do feel like the form was really this, my first thing that I love about the hat press. So if we talk about what did I like or not like about the hat press. First thing is the form. Like I said, or great on any hat. It's really firm, holds that hat great, holds heat. You can press against it. It's not, you know, it doesn't like totally collapse. Really, really great form. And then the second thing I love about the hat press is the curve on the hat press itself. So the combination of the two is what I think makes this so great because the hat press holds the hat into that shape. And then it's like this curve on this hat press works on all these hats magically. Like they're all different sizes, shapes, types, and this curve worked for them all. So I do think the combination of the curve with the hat press form is really what makes it really great. Now, you're saying to yourself, but I've made hats with my Easy Press Mini, so I've been getting that question a lot. I do understand that, and I have two. So what I've done in the past is like rolled up a towel or something like that, put it inside of a hat, use my Easy Press Mini on it. So a couple things with that. The Easy Press Mini covers a super small area. That can lead to you not being successful with your project. So going over each of those areas, making sure you don't skip one, that type of thing. I do like that the hat press covers that larger area all at one time. So it's one thing with the Easy Press Mini. The second thing is the hat press, I can integrate it with Cricut Heat on my phone and I can get an exact time and temperature, which I can't do with Easy Press Mini. With that exact time and temperature, no matter what product I'm using, sublimation, infusible ink, different types of iron-ons, so I used patterned iron-on, I used glitter, like I used tons of different types as well during this whole experiment and I was able to tweak the time and temperature to match each of those to be successful. So I do think that the hat press is worth it just for those features. Now, what are the cons of the hat press? So I made all of these hats, basically one right after another. It's a lot of hats. It's a lot of pressing with my hands. It was a lot, I'm not gonna lie. So for me, regular basis, I probably would only make a few hats occasionally, gifts, things like that. So the hat press is perfect. However, if I was like running a business and I was going to make 40, I don't know how many hats I made, if I didn't make 40, but let's say I was gonna make, I needed to make 40 hats a day, the hat press might not be the solution for me. And it just depends on you. For me, like pressing with my hands that much, taking up the time to hold the hat press that long wasn't ideal. I made it work, it worked great. However, you may wanna consider that depending on the number of hats you are going to be making. And then the other thing with the hat press, I recommend using Cricut Heat as much as possible. I do think it helps you dial in the time and temperature and help me be successful with the majority of the projects the first time instead of pressing a second time, if that makes sense. If you're using another product, let's say I'm using like sublimation, something like that, that is not a Cricut product, I would check with the manufacturer of either the blank or whatever you're putting on your hat for the time and temperature. Dial those in with the custom settings in Cricut Heat. I have another video all about Cricut Heat. I'll link to that in the description below. You can see how to dial in those custom times and temperatures and get the perfect time and temperature for whatever hat you are making. So final tip, stay away from things where the liner will melt. Check your hats before you start pressing. So that was on me. I probably should have looked on the inside. I did not. Um, the liner did melt all over my hat form, but I was able to just remove that. So I took a rag and put it over the heat form, heated it up with the hat press. The, the whatever it was just came right off. So it was not a big deal. However, check the insides of your hats, make sure everything's out of them. If it's some of these like ball caps or make sure it doesn't have a liner that will completely melt away once you start pressing. But that's okay, you live and you learn and I'm here to do experiments for you. 
So that's my bottom line review on the hat press. I hope that helps you decide whether you want a hat press or not and maybe gives you some inspiration if you've already purchased the hat press or you're planning to purchase the hat press of like all the different hats you can make because I think I made more hats than I could probably wear in a lifetime. Hopefully I can give some of these away, especially the kids' hats. So thank you all so much for joining me today. If you have any more questions about the hat press or anything you would like to see in the future, I mean, I'm definitely planning on doing more hat press videos. Happy to help and answer your questions in future videos. So drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week. And trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.